It's been over six months since I talked about one of the non-playable boss characters in Street Fighter V, and in that time I occasionally get requests to talk about more of them. Shadow Lady is the big one, which makes perfect sense, but now and again I get requests to talk about some of the lesser known ones, like Shadow Nash, Omega Gill, and Ghost Bison. And they're all pretty cool in their own right. So naturally, today we're talking about a character that I haven't been asked about a single time. One of the most fucked up characters, or things in general, in all of Street Fighter V, the non-playable boss version of Zangief, also known as the Ultra Heavyweight Champion. Now, you might be wondering why this video is a fighting game garbage, while my video on the boss version of Ryu was a fighting game gold, and it's very simple. The boss version of Ryu was fucked up in a good way. Some of his tools were absurdly strong, while the boss version of Geef is fucked up in more of a bad way. It genuinely feels like whoever was working on this character actually fucked up at a couple points. He's got a lot of really strange things going on under the hood, and unlike Boss Ryu, they're mostly really bad. Before we touch on that, we'll just talk about some of his more basic traits. This character has 1,250 health and 2,000 stun. So, very tanky, but not as tanky as the boss version of Ryu. Just like the boss version of Ryu, he's completely immune to counter hits. As far as I know, there are only three ways to counter hit this character. By forcibly turning counter hits on in training mode, using Alex's V skill 1, or, weirdly enough, hitting him out of his backdash recovery. His backdash is throw invincible, but it's not fully invincible like the boss version of Ryu's. He has no V system of any kind. No V skills, no V trigger, no V shift, no V reversal. All he has are normals, throws, two special moves, and a taunt. He doesn't even have a super. The boss version of Geef keeps the buffed throw that Geef gets when grabbing a crouching opponent. It does 10 more damage and 30 extra stun. It might seem weird to point this out, but honestly, this character lost so many tools that Geef had, it feels like an obligation to point out the things that he did get to keep. Normally, I would talk about specials later in the video, but since there's only two to talk about, I might as well just get them out the way now. Geef only has SPD and Lariat, and SPD is weird. Some things about it are incredible, and some things about it are really, really bad. In some ways, SPD is much scarier than it is in SF5. For a start, all three versions are frame 1, which is kind of insane, and somewhat makes up for the fact that Geef doesn't have a frame 1 untackable throw, like the boss version of Ryu. They've also got far less whiff recovery. In Vanilla Street Fighter V, it takes just over a second to whiff an SPD, while here it's about two-thirds of that. One very strange thing about SPD is the range. Traditionally in Street Fighter, light versions of command grabs have more range, while heavier versions have less range but more damage to compensate. However, that's just not the case here. All three have the exact same range. This far out, the light version whiffs. But if I walk in a bit, the heavy version won't. This is weird because they all actually have different damage. Light does 250, medium 280, and heavy 300 but I don't really see a reason to not go for the heavy version. One massive downgrade with SPD though is the Oki. In Street Fighter V, if Geef dashes after landing an SPD, he is minus two after the light version, plus two but not point blank after the medium version, and plus two point blank after the heavy version. Here, all three versions leave you minus eight and miles away from the opponent. This is awful, although it is worth noting that your command grab does reach from here, and it is frame 1, so at least that's something. 
Lariat is also very strange. It actually hits on frame 2, which is typically unheard of in Street Fighter V. Luke's heavy flash knuckle is minus 2 on block, and intended to be safe, but Lariat actually punishes it on block. In practice, this isn't actually that big a deal, because, you know, frame 1 SPD. Another issue with Lariat is that the hitbox that actually hits on frame 2 is tiny. You pretty much have to be point blank to land it. If I walk back just a little bit, you'll notice that Geef hits the opponent on a different frame where he's not facing the opponent. That hitbox does not hit on frame 2. It's incredibly stubby. Another big issue with Lariat is that the tiny hitbox that appears on frame 2 is the only one that hits crouching opponents. This makes comboing into the move a nightmare on a crouching opponent. The closest thing you have to a grounded confirm is just linking into it after a single crouching light punch. It's still projectile invincible at least. And it's still a fantastic anti-air. So in terms of specials, that's literally it. He just has SPD and Lariat. No running grab, no air SPD, not even the shitty parry that I already forgot the name of. You might have also noticed that there's no EX SPD. Since he doesn't have a super, this means that despite the fact he can build meter, Boss Geef has literally no way of spending any meter that he builds. It's just sitting there. It's sad. Now to give this character some credit, they do seem to be intended as like a reference to the different iterations of Street Fighter 2 Zangief, and some parts of their kit that I'll touch on later do that quite well. So only having Lariat and SPD could also be interpreted as a reference. In World Warrior, those were the only two specials that Geef had. Supers weren't introduced until Super Turbo, and EX moves weren't introduced until Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. However, even if you appreciate the reference, I don't think it makes this character any more interesting. It's not like he has that many tools that reference the older games, he just doesn't have things that weren't in them, and that's kind of... lame. Now, I'm not asking for anything crazy like Green Hand, but it would have been nice for this character to get more moves that were reminiscent of their appearances in Street Fighter 2, rather than just taking away a bunch of tools and calling it a reference. I think that's a very boring way of going about things. It would have been nice to see, like, Geef's old sweep animation. Or his old crouching heavy punch. Or even his quick lariat that he lost in Street Fighter V. Little things like that would have gone a long way. What you've got here is like if someone threw up on the carpet and called it a reference to what they last ate. I don't know. Not very interesting. Moving on to normals, there's quite a lot to talk about. His lights and mediums seem to be sped up drastically. For example, his old standing medium punch was frame 7 and plus 4 on hit, while now it's frame 6 and plus 7 on hit. His linking ability is generally much improved. Notably, crouching light punch, standing light kick, and standing medium punch are all plus 7 on hit. This is notable because his sweep is now frame 7. This seems like a very deliberate change, like they wanted this character to link into Sweep. And fair enough, because that's very reminiscent of Street Fighter 2 Geef, especially in Super Turbo, where it's a very important link for him. All three of these normals also link to Sweep in Super Turbo, and unlike just removing a bunch of his tools, this actually is a pretty cool reference in my book. They're not quite as satisfying as they are in Super Turbo, but still it's pretty cool. I, I really appreciate this. However, it might just be me, but god, Geef Sweep in Street Fighter V just feels so stubby. And there's so many links that you wish worked that just kind of don't or require extremely precise micro walks. It's just very unsatisfying. Notably, stand medium punch, stand medium punch sweep is something I've only managed to get working on a crouching big character. 
and it requires you walk forward for one frame in between the two standing medium punches. It's just, you wish it wasn't this picky considering this character already has very limited options for combos. Another issue when it comes to completing combos with this character is the fact that they've effectively only got a single cancelable normal, and that's Crouching Light Kick. It's a fine normal in its own right, but god, if this character was going to have one cancelable normal, you almost wish it was going to be anything else. Despite this character's impressive linking abilities, because you have to link into such a stubby normal to go into Lariat, your options here aren't all that great. Also, because you don't have regular Geef's forward heavy punch, your best combos into Lariat are usually quite weak in terms of damage. If regular Geef gets a forward heavy punch, he's almost always going to break 200 damage, which is actually quite difficult for this character if he wants to go into Lariat. Generally, your only options are counter hit crouching heavy punch, which is a very unsafe move to fish for counter hits I might add, or this very wonky combo that only barely hits 200 damage and requires a micro walk after the standing medium punch. Overall, your options are not good. Here's where things get weird though. See, a big issue with this character is that Crouching Light Kick is their only cancelable normal. And yeah, that sucks. However, technically speaking, Crouching Light Punch and Standing Light Kick are also cancelable. And that sounds great because in this context, they're much better normals. However, if you play this character, you'll never be able to cancel these normals because for some fucking reason, they're coded so that only a CPU playing the character can actually cancel them. Now you could argue that this maybe makes sense, even if it's a bit strange because, you know, this is a non-playable character that only the CPU should be playing as. But here's the thing, if you let a CPU play as this character, they will never actually attempt this cancel. Only a CPU can do it, but they actually won't. I, I, you, you fucking wonder how this happens. Killbox actually got these cancels working in game again, and honestly it does wonders for this character. Everything just feels so much better. Believe it or not, this character has two more fucked up cancels, and they're fucked up in a completely different way. There would stand heavy punch, and crouching heavy kick. I can't really visually convey what's wrong with these, so you'll have to bear with me for a minute. So, in Street Fighter V, moves that are cancelable can be cancelled into different things. Some moves are special cancelable, some are V trigger cancelable. And some are super cancelable. Pretty basic stuff, we're, we're all familiar with this at this point. Obviously there are other types of cancels, for example there's Dan's V-Skill stuff. But for the sake of argument, let's pretend these are the only three types of cancels in the game. This will make sense in a minute, I swear. So imagine that, to make a move special, V-Trigger or super cancelable, you had to give a move a 1, 2, or a 3 in the game's code. What's happened with these two normals is that someone gave them a 4. Stand Heavy Punch and Sweep are both technically cancelable, but the thing that you can cancel them into doesn't actually exist. And I'm not talking like, oh, they're super cancelable, but this character doesn't have a super. No, that the, the, it just there's this like fucking mystery cancel that these moves have, and you can't cancel them into anything in a real match. It it's really weird, but I promise it's there in the game's code, and it's very fucked up. Also, for some fucking reason, crouching heavy kick is only mystery cancelable on block. So not only does the thing that you can cancel these into not exist, but you could only hypothetically cancel into it on block for sweep. I really don't fucking know. Also, just on the topic of weird shit this character has and CPU fuckery, I was watching a CPU play this character, you know, to see if they'd do the fucked up cancels or any other weird stuff, and one thing that happened is that they did like a neutral jump and immediately cancelled the landing recovery into a forward jump. 
Now, if I try and do the same thing, it looks nothing like that. It's significantly slower. And there's not, like, some secret move in this character's move list that replicates that. No, this is just a thing that only the CPU can do. It's a specific script for the CPU. Now, I'm not sure if it's exclusive to this character or just some shit that the CPU actually does to try and cheat you out. I'll be honest, part of me kind of wishes it was just for this character, because... Then I'd be like, oh, it's a reference to Street Fighter 2, because, you know, that's the CPU would cheat so much in that fucking game. Probably probably not what's happening here, but I, I, I like to think that. Now, let's get a bit back on track and talk about more of this character's normals. Standing Light Punch is very interesting. It is absurdly fast. On standing big characters like Abigail, it hits on frame 3, and on crouching regular characters, it hits on frame 5. On standing Luke, it hits on frame 4. Unlike what we currently have, it's a stupidly good anti-air. It hits absurdly high up. What I find interesting about this is that if this move is hitting some grounded opponents on frame 3, and the anti-air hitbox comes out that early and is that high up, could this move technically be like a frame 2 normal? Even if the frame 2 hitbox doesn't hit grounded opponents. I don't know. Maybe. It's kind of interesting to think about. Crouching Light Punch is godlike. This is a really good button even in vanilla Street Fighter V, where it's frame 4 and is plus 3 on both hit and block. Here, it hits on frame 3, is plus 7 on hit, but is weirdly only plus 2 on block. Still, it's an amazing button and much better than what we currently have in Street Fighter V. In terms of startup, standing light kick is unchanged. It's still frame 5. However, the recovery has been slashed. In vanilla Street Fighter V, this move is minus 3 on block, minus 1 on hit. Here, it's plus 2 on block, and plus 7 on hit. Other than the fact that boss geef can special cancel it, and regular geef can't, I'm pretty sure that crouching light kick is the exact same normal as it is in vanilla Street Fighter V. Plus 4 on hit, plus 2 on block. In fairness, I know regular Geef used to be able to special cancel this move. I'm not sure when that was changed though. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Crouching Medium Punch seems the exact same as it is in Vanilla Street Fighter V, except you can't special cancel it. This is a pretty good normal, but here I don't really see the point, because it kind of pales in comparison to the buffed standing Medium Punch. Both are frame 6, but standing medium punch has less pushback, has more frame advantage on hit, and is just overall much better. The only real upside I can see to crouching medium punch is that it's plus 3 on block, while standing medium punch is plus 2 on block. On top of just being way more consistent, standing medium punch also does 10 more damage, so just stick with that. I mean, I'm telling you to just stick with that, like someone's gonna go out and fucking play this character. God, what the fuck am I doing? Standing and crouching medium kick are very strange, being better on block than vanilla Street Fighter V, but worse on hit. Standing medium kick is still frame 10, but rather than being minus 3 on block and plus 2 on hit, it's minus 1 on both. Crouching medium kick is now a frame faster at frame 7. But rather than being minus 4 on block and plus 2 on hit, it's minus 1 on block and minus 2 on hit. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've seen anything like this in Street Fighter V. It's mostly unheard of. Standing Heavy Punch is not doing so hard. In vanilla Street Fighter V, this move hits on frame 13 if uncharged and frame 37 if fully charged. Here, it's always frame 18. You can't charge it anymore. On top of that, it's minus 6 on block, which is worse than vanilla geefs will ever be. One nice thing about this move is that it's still a crush counter. You don't get as much advantage as normal Zangief, but still, it's cool that he has a crush counter considering that the boss version of Ryu had none. You're only plus 1 after a forward dash, which sounds bad, but keep in mind you've got a frame 1 SPD, so it's not that big of a deal. The meterless damage is actually pretty amazing. Stand Heavy Kick seems the exact same as vanilla Street Fighter V. Frame 11, plus 2 on hit, minus 2 on block, whiffs on crouch. It's still a crush counter, and that crush counter works the exact same as it does in vanilla Street Fighter V, 
But what you get off that crush counter is quite interesting. Vanilla Geef would usually go into Air SPD here, but here's what Boss Geef gets. You can juggle a Lariat into another Lariat. It looks really cool. While it looks really cool, it's unfortunately really inconsistent. I've only managed to get it off to the Stand Heavy Kick Crush counter. I've never gotten it off something like Anti-Air Lariat. If you're too far out, then the combo doesn't work. You need to get a high connect on the first Lariat, and you're juggling into that tiny frame 2 hitbox for the second Lariat, so it's not the most consistent thing in the world, unfortunately. Surprisingly, Sweep isn't a crush counter. Which is very weird, that's near universal in Street Fighter V. It made sense for the boss Ryu because he had no crush counters, but here it's just like, how the fuck did that happen? Also, I've talked about how it's much faster, and while it still doesn't give Oki after a dash, it is much better on block. It's minus 3 rather than minus 10. So, a big improvement. Crouching Heavy Punch is an extremely whatever normal. It's the exact same as Vanilla Gif's old Crouching Heavy Punch, before it was buffed in Season 5 to launch the opponent on hit, so it's just very unremarkable. It's a very okay but unrewarding anti-air, and you can link out of it on counter hit, but it's not a great move to fish for counter hits with, because it's unsafe on block at minus 4, and very stubby. It's not like the damage off it is that great either. Even in situations where you know you're guaranteed to get a counter hit, such as after blocking a DP, your other options are typically much better. He still has his jump down heavy punch body splash, and it's still great. It behaves pretty much exactly how you'd expect. It's a very beefy cross up. It's not really that notable, but I feel like pointing it out anyways, because, you know, it's a tool that this character actually got to keep, so it's pretty notable for that alone. His air headbutt, on the other hand, has received some notable changes. It's still only possible from a neutral jump, and it still does 120 damage, but it's based on his old air headbutt, so it doesn't launch on hit or cancel to air SPD the way it does now. However, what's notable here is the stun output. His air headbutt will randomly do either 600 stun, eight hundred stun, or one thousand ten hundred stun, which stuns every vanilla character in a single hit. This is another nod to Street Fighter 2, both because stun output has random variants to it in these games, and because Geef's headbutt just does a shit ton of stun here. Also, to answer a question that literally no one asked, I did 100 headbutts to see if there was any significant difference in the odds for each stun value. 100 headbutts later, 42 of them did 600 stun, 30 of them did 800 stun, and 28 did 1100. So, either it's like a 40%, 30%, 30% split, or it's just each one has a 1 in 3 chance of coming up and I got unlucky. I would do more, but I haven't played online in a while, so giving Luke a concussion isn't really doing it for me the way it usually would. It is possible to combo into an air headbutt, but it's very, very picky. And of course, there's also the chance that if the opponent's stun isn't high enough, you combo into like the 600 stun version and then you just kind of look stupid. You can go into it off a grounded stand heavy kick crush counter, but it's very picky. It's character specific, only working on big characters like Alex, Fang, Birdie, Abigail and Sagat. It only works in the corner and you have to be near point blank. Now, that's pretty much it for the Ultra Heavyweight Champion, but believe it or not, we're not done, because Zangief is the only character in all of Street Fighter V to have two boss characters based on him. We're done with the Ultra Heavyweight Champion, but now we're going to very quickly talk about the Mask. So, this is the Mask, and you fought them in Extra Battle to unlock the skin of the same name, and I know I'm not using it, but that's just because I never unlocked it. If you look in the top left, you can see that he does have his own unique character icon, so... 
This is totally a unique character, trust me. Now, at a glance, this character seems way more interesting than Ultra Heavyweight Champion. He has all of Geef's command normals. He shares Geef's V system. He's got five special moves instead of two. And he can actually spend his meter because he has EX moves and a super. However, the mask becomes significantly less interesting once you realize why he has all this stuff. Despite the fact the game counts him as his own unique character, the mask is literally just a copy-paste of Season 4 Sangeef. That's it. On the bright side, this means that the mask has that sweet, sweet throw invincibility on EXSPD that Geef lost in Season 5. But on the other hand, he is missing out on some nice buffs that Geef got in Season 5, like being able to V-Trigger Cancel Lariat, and Crouch Heavy Punch being a launcher. So there you go. That's a look at the two non-playable boss characters based on Zangief in Street Fighter V. I know one of them is generally very limited, and the other is just a normal character pretending to be a boss character, but I still hope you found this interesting nonetheless, especially all the weird shit that Ultra Heavyweight Champion has going on. It's really, really strange. I haven't seen anything like it. Normally, at the end of these vids, I'd show you, like, a funny combo that they can do, but I've shown you pretty much every semi-cool combo these guys have already. So, like, yeah, that's it. Bye.